Today we'll be going over exercise 7.15, Collapse. The problem reads, write a method called collapse that accepts an array of int integers as a parameter and returns a new array containing the result of replacing each pair of integers with the sum of that pair. For example, if an array called list stores the values 7, 2, 8, 9, 4, 13, 7, 1, 9, and 10, then the call of collapse with parameter list should return a new array containing 9, 17, 17, 8, and 19. The first pair from the original list is collapsed into 9, uh, which is the sum of 7 and 2. The second pair is collapsed into 17, which is the sum of 8 and 9, and so on. If the list stores an odd number of elements, the final element is not collapsed. For example, if the list had been 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then the call would return 375. Your method should not change the array that is passed as a parameter. So uh, first off, we of course are going to start with creating our method header, so public static. And because uh, we are returning an array of numbers, that is what our return type is going to be. And of course, the name of our method is going to be the name of the problem, so uh, collapse. And of course, this will also be taking in uh, the parameter list, which is going to represent our original list of integers. We're also going to go ahead and create another uh, list of integers called result. And this is going to be where we're going to be uh, storing our sums of pairs. Now to determine, uh, we have declared the variable, but we're not going to initialize it yet. And why is that? Well, depending on whether this parameter list has an even or odd number of integers, the length of result is going to change as a result. So for instance, if, for instance, list had eight elements, then uh, result would only have a length of four, whereas if list had nine elements, then result would have a length of five. So let's actually go ahead and do that. So depending on how long list is. So if our list length is an even number, and how can we check if it's an even number? Well, we can just use the mods and see if the list length mod 2 is equal to 0. So if it's divided by 0 and the remainder is, uh, sorry, if the length is divided by 2 and we have a remainder of 0, we know that it, of course, is even. In which case, we can just go ahead and initialize result to the uh, length of the list divided by 2, so half of that. Now, if that is not the case, then we're going to go ahead and we're still going to initialize it. So this is in the case that the length of the list is an odd number, except after we divide by 2, we're going to add 1. And why is that? Well, in uh, integer division, which is what Java uses here, it's going to basically uh, round down. So f if, for instance, we have a list that is 5 elements long, which is a odd number, 5 divided by 2 is going to give us 2, because 5 divided by 2 in actuality gives us 2.5, but of course that's going to be rounded down, um, which serves as an issue, because remember, the problem reads that the, um, the final element is not collapsed, so we want to make sure to include that final um, element, which is why we do that plus 1. We're also going to go ahead and put an index. Now, why do we need the index? Well, we need the index uh, as a kind of separate pointer to be able to um, kind of serve as the index for our result list. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So first, to add up all these numbers, we're probably going to need a for loop that loops through this list. Right, and it, we want it, this for loop to start from the very beginning. So we're going to have i equals 0 here and go all the way to the very end. So if i 
is less than or equal to list dot length. We're going to do a minus one. Well, why minus one? You might ask. Well, remember each pair is class, so that means this two and this two, this two and this two, and so on and so forth. Now, if we have our for loop go all the way to the end, well, the 10 can't be collapsed with another number. So we actually need to stop at the second to last number, in which case is 9. Uh, that way, uh, we give that number a chance to be able to collapse with a pair. We're also going to not increase our for loop by 1, but by 2. And we do this because we of course want to add by pairs and by adding my pairs we essentially kind of skip over every other number now this is kind of where the index comes in so our at the index at our um, quote-unquote result we're gonna go ahead and add up those two numbers so at the index we're looking at and at the next possible index um, in our list, and then we add a one to index. So this way, the very first time index is gonna be zero. So at index zero for the result, we're looking at index zero for the list and index one for the list. And then in the next iteration of the for loop, we are going to be putting our next sum in the um, in index one of result because that's going to be the next immediate number. However, for list, we actually want to look at uh, indec indexes two and three because we already looked at zero and one, which is kind of why we're increasing by two here. That way, um, on the next iteration, we're looking at uh, list at index two and then list at index two plus one, which is going to be three. Finally, in the case that our list length is odd, we need to add that final number. So we're gonna first check to see if it's odd. So this is very, very similar to how we check to see if it's even, except we check to see if the modulus by two is not equal to zero. And if it is not, then at the very end of our result list, we're gonna go ahead and add the very last number from list. And finally, we're going to return result. And once we submit that, you'll see we pass all of our tests.